All right. We have started the recording. Now, uh, can somebody quickly give me what was the last chapter? What what did we last go through? Just a quick, like a minute or so. Like we went through the uh, strategies of business models. Mm -hmm. Then, um, uh, then in digital world, how uh, employees are uh, employees should employees are retained. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, uh, then I forgot. <laughs> OK, no issues. We finally went through how leaders can focus on some specific areas when they move towards digital culture. Do you guys remember that? We talked yeah, about leaders and see leaders and CEOs. It is divided. Yes, 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 exactly. Now, in this chapter, we are going to look at the leadership. Mm -hmm. OK, so. Let me just give you a quick intro on that and then we'll start on it. So what is leadership? Leadership is about providing a direction, uh, creating a vision and influencing others also to work towards achieving a common organizational goals. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just about being them in charge. It's about inspiring the people and guiding them to reach a full potential. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can somebody give me an example for it? Like if it is an office, like then uh, um, our managers can be our leaders, or the team TL um, will be our leaders, will be directing mm -hmm. us uh, and showing us what what is to be done. Mm -hmm. Say your favorite sports team's captain isn't he a leader? Mm -hmm. Yes. As simple as that. Like. Uh, one of the things I want to let you guys know is whenever you are concerned with this exam, think of some simple answers. Don't complicate yourself by thinking over complicated answers. Okay. You will only be able to sort out and find your answers when you think when you approach it in a basic way. Every one of your answers is available in the simple thinking format itself. You don't need to um, think on a strategic level now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. just focus on taking the first three steps or four steps now, and then we can jump on to 10 15 steps. Uh, for think in third step now, and you will get your correct answer itself. Le don't jump to 10 or 15, and uh, if you're not able to find an answer at the 10th or 15th step, don't get stressed out because it really is not necessary. Every answer lies in the third step itself, it's where it builds, it's where it starts to build. Okay 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 all right so we are going to look about management and leadership and now uh, so management what uh, management and leaderships are true or two crucial concepts in the business world is it not uh, yes okay so these both terms are often used interchangeably but they have distinct characters and roles. Can somebody tell me what is the difference between management and leadership? Bilal, you're silent. Give me an answer. This this class needs to be interactive. Uh, okay. uh, so basically, as a leader, uh, it is always about looking forward to opportunities, I guess. And also forecasting what is going to come, uh, but management is more into managing the existing processes. How we can uh, analyze and create value on the existing processes is something which I understand by these two different uh, distinct uh, like things. All right. Anybody else? It's fine if it's wrong. That's how you learn. Nobody is going to judge. Just uh, tell me what you feel. Uh, I think uh, management is more focused on uh, uh, getting uh, getting uh, KPIs done, uh, uh, works done, process done. It's all about uh, finishing the business process. Uh, at, like 
are we getting the talk and those kind of thing and leadership is all about empowering the people to to a different level uh, guiding them to uh, do new skills uh, those kind of thing i think that's one of the difference and a right. leader uh, yeah all right you are very close both of you guys uh let me tell you how you can effectively differentiate using some terminologies so management is all about organizing coordinating resources and planning to achieve the organization's goal efficiently while leadership is about inspiring guiding and influencing the people to work towards a common goal are we seeing the difference so management is like setting up the basic format and leader is someone leadership is something that makes the employees use the format and achieve something or work towards some common goal are we good now um when you is there in any uh, uh, any data in tabular form so that i can copy and write i'm sorry what like any uh, Uh, is this distinction available in a tabular form so that i can uh, copy and write it in my notes um uh, no i don't think so it might be available in the study text but uh, i don't think this is essentially needed for you to copy and write down you just need to remember okay if it if you so badly need it there is nothing to worry about just uh, uh, note down what are the topics like like you asked now what are the theory you need like the explanation that i am giving and then mm -hmm. uh, i can uh, send it to you in whatsapp privately or or in the group itself that's not an issue okay all right moving on now we will explore different managerial roles okay these okay. roles are identified by a theorist called henry minsberg and so he says the first one first role is interpersonal role the first group the first group is interpersonal roles that comprises of a figure head a figure head is someone who represents the organization in formal duties right so for example i can say a ceo who's attending a um, a function or even a, ga a gala or something he or she is a figure head okay Now, mm -hmm. leader is someone who motivates and guides the subordinates. We talked about this, and the third one is liaison. Liaison is someone who maintains information networks outside the organization. Say, for example, networking with the similar industry people. He is he or she is called a liaison. Are we catching up? Yes. Yes. Okay. now the second one being informational roles the first one we saw is interpersonal roles the those three uh, roles and the second three we are going to look at is informational roles and the first one is monitor a monitor is someone who scans the environment for information he uh, say for example i can say something like uh, a marketing manager who is analyzing a market trends he is called a monitor now mm -hmm. disseminator disseminator is someone who shares informations with their subordinates say for example i am a team leader i am sharing certain insights to you regarding the project we have in hand at the moment so i am a disseminator all right mm -hmm. and the third one is spokesperson spokesperson is somebody who represents the organization to outsiders say for example present someone who uh, who represents your company at a conference not in a gala or a business sense but just something like a, a meeting uh, to a public or something like that someone who speaks on behalf of the company that person is spokesperson right mm, okay maybe we can say e even pr pr is even a spokesperson spokesperson okay now the next set of roles falls under this category called decisional roles okay mm -hmm. and the first one that we are going to look at is entrepreneur what is entrepreneur tell me somebody like, like someone who establishes establishes an enterprise like mm -hmm. 
ओके एनीथिंग एल्स if if uh, especially if this is uh, i entrepreneur is a person who identify a problem and think it as an opportunity then uh, somehow uh, collect the resources and and uh, make that opportunity a, uh, into business solution yes that's really great answers from both of you uh, thank you for answering that now the next one i'm going to jump is somebody called a disturbance handler what do you think disturbance handler is this from the name itself what do you understand from the name something like handling stress stress did i hear stress yes okay anything else uh it's it's something like if if any department have any problem and they will uh uh a, if, if 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 a department have a problem and uh, a person is engaging into a department and helping that department something like that and if uh those that some all right like a helper okay really good answers both of you it's exactly true a disturbance handler is someone who resolves the conflicts and the crisis that arises okay so you both are correct in that way now who is a resource allocator a resource allocator is someone who decides where to apply the organization's resources say for example assigning budgets to different project that person is called a resource allocator okay and one more person called negotiator and we all know who negotiator is they represent the organization in major negotiations for example negotiation with suppliers negotiation with the uh, with the clients or whatever it is okay okay so that also comes under this decision role these are just extra uh those two those uh, resource uh, allocator and the uh, what is it uh, negotiator. negotiator those are something that i wanted to let you guys nothing else okay. don't worry okay so now let's look at the next bulletin points okay so to promote and empowerment just i'm not going to read the bullet points i just want you guys to think about it how do managers promote empowerment i want uh, every one of you to give one or two points empowerment can be basically uh, can you be a little bit louder please hello yes uh I'll yes you can hear me right louder. uh okay i think there's some issue with the headset so basically empower means uh, to give a uh, short rewards i would say for each small tasks accomplished this can be one uh, one empower um, empowerment which managers can do and uh, other than that i'm just thinking what what else is okay anybody else nice uh, empowerment uh, empowerment means uh, uh, providing new uh, goal sets for the subordinates something like that and uh, uh, and enc and encouraging them to do that and giving them confidence and comfort and necessary resources to uh achieve that call okay think. really good amrita do you have any one or two points to add yeah so um i believe empowerment has to do something with uh uh you know encouraging them to achieve like a promotion like um giving them 
um, um, a motivation to uh, uh, complete certain tasks so that they can uh, attain some promotion in the organization. Okay. Okay, really good. So now we'll read out those bullet points and see if you guys have got all the points. So to promote empowerment, management managers should set clear boundaries and ensure employees know what is expected from them. Did anybody say this point? I Activate. think I somewhat yes. about this. Okay, that's good. It's it's not an issue if you're not able to completely deliver it. It's the it's the thought of thinking in the correct direction. Okay. Always appreciate how your mind goes to think in the right direction. That's how everybody can learn and grow. Okay. Now actively encourage employee development. I think this has been said by somebody. Communicate. Uh, I, 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 yes good then communicate openly with employees and adopt an open door policy this is very important but i don't think anybody told this but it's fine you you can learn it the next one will, is allow employees to contribute and listen to their views i think this has been said offer mm -hmm. regular feedback i don't think this has been said and led by example as well has not been said I'm sorry if I missed someone saying these points. If I missed, I'm sorry. Now, moving on to delegation. What is, tell me, what is delegation? Uh, giving uh, a part of, I mean, uh, delegation means uh, basically um, uh, delegating the work. Mm -hmm. Divide, no, dividing. You cannot escape like that. You can't say delegating work. What is delegation? I mean, Tell me that. It means um, uh, uh, means giving the work of one person to another. Like mm -hmm. it will be a huge task. So dividing the task and giving to each person. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I'll just tell you, um, give you a technical sentence that you can remember. So delegation involves assigning tasks and responsibilities to subordinates along with the authority to carry them all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you know yep so somebody asked you about delegation again remember the words assigning tasks subordinates and authority to carry them okay because that's the key. okay guys moving on to benefits of delegation so can some like i want all of you guys to pitch in give me one one points at least on what do you think is the benefit of delegation I think one would be that uh, like each individual will have different perspectives of doing things. So when we delegate, uh, for example, a task which which is being done by me and which is being done by a different person will be uh, will be different in a way that they think it differently. They can find a more uh, better process than I do it. So I think this can be a, this can be a benefit of delegation. Mm -hmm. Okay, really good. Thank you. Next. And I think um, there's also um, like uh, saving of time. If one person has to do all the tasks, then it will be more time consuming. So, um, uh, um, but if we are delegating the task, like it can be completed uh, within much less time. So I mm -hmm. think that okay. is also a benefit. Really good. Next, please. Evan. Um, hi. 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 I think with, del with delegation, um, the person delegating the work, that person can then focus on more of focus on more higher level um, stuff. Say, for example, if you are a manager and you delegate, you are a manager and um, you need to um, gather data, then you can delegate the get the gathering of the data, and then you can the supervisor or the person delegating the work can just focus on doing the reports or summaries or something like that. All right. Next. Uh, by delegating, uh, by delegating the work, the manager uh, he will be able to specialize in other tasks, like Natasha said. And mm. uh, this is 
and this is also a form of decentralization uh, mm -hmm. like each person will get their own like up and it's also increased the confidence of the subordinates by giving them a uh, new task and and uh, they also have uh, a scope of uh, developing their career or something like that really good good job everybody good job you i think you guys almost got all the important points uh, can i just add one more point to it it also gives job satisfaction to people because when you yes. delegate okay. complicated tasks to different people who are under who are working under you they get a chance to work on something new something challenging which gives them a satisfaction you know and they will also be motivated i think eben told that motivation point okay really good job guys that's that's about the benefits of delegation moving on we talk about how delegation is very beneficial to everybody how it is healthy how it promotes a healthy one work environment how it uh, reduces the time on doing a certain task and everything however if we observe properly many managers are reluctant to delegate can we can you guys give me uh, some ideas on why managers are reluctant to delegate do you guys have any idea on it i think one such reason would be uh, because uh, like whatever happens in the in that particular department at the end the person who should answer for that particular task will be the manager so they might be reluctant to give the task to their subordinate because there are chances of mistakes or errors which uh, if they do it by themselves they can avoid from happening i think this can be one reason um, I think um, <clears throat> if the um, supervisor or the person that delegates the work is insecure, then it might be a bit um, don't want to delegate the work because he is afraid that uh, his um, is in is is the per the person that is delegating the work to will be will do the work better than he does. So that yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and in other scenarios where a manager uh, wants to keep the work for himself, like he wants to show that he is the ultimate authority, like, and the subordinates don't know anything. So, mm -hmm. uh, a kind of an authoritarian um, uh, manager. So, he does not want to delegate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good job. Uh, delegating, uh, delegating can be a time consuming process because if we sometimes the managers might have to train this uh, employee to uh, in order to delegate the work so that's also so he might the manager might avoid it because of this uh, uh, training okay really good can i also add uh, i would also like to add a couple more points to it i would say one of the reasons they are reluctant to delegate is because they fear that they would lose control of it and uh, one more reason could be they might be thinking my you know my subordinates are not that experienced in this so they won't do the uh, do the job properly or uh, they will they are fearing that uh, delegating these tasks will make them uh, lose touch of their day to day operations these are all one of the couple, couple these are all couple more points that i wanted to add do you guys agree on that Yes, absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, sorry about that. Now, we've talked about uh, delegation, we've talked about managerials, we have talked about management. Now, let's shift to leadership. Would anybody like to remind the others again what we talked about? What is leadership? Uh, um, leadership. Yes. Leadership is um, when you influence um, your inferiors or the people working um, for you to do the to do their work. Hmm. Okay. Someone else was about to say something as well. Tell me, please. 
I think the one which we discussed initially, like providing direction to to attain the organizational goals. Yes, correct. Now, now we know what is leadership, but do you think every leader works or functions in the same way? No. Do you guys think so? No. No, no right? Say, for example, uh, now I'm a leader for you guys. I'm providing guidance. I'm providing uh, direction. And I'm influencing your works towards achieving your proper result. Yeah? I would say mm -hmm. I'm a leader. Do you guys agree on that? Yes. Now, I am this way, but your other staff might be in certain other way. Now, what we are going to learn next is what are the different types of leaders that are found in the that are found in our businesses, okay, or in real world? I can say, say the number one is being charismatic leaders. Okay, what do they mean by charismatic leaders? Is these people, these leaders, influence come from their personality, okay? Can somebody give me an example for this, or, or how how do you think that this will work? I, I think uh, Mahatma Gandhi will be an example for this. Okay, really uh, good. Really good. Because okay. he... yes, please continue. Yeah, because uh, the, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was able to inspire like a cause of people in India because mm -hmm. uh, of his uh, because of his dressing style and his ideas, and he was able to be in Indian India, India was not uh, don't know how to uh, protest against the uh, British. The British was suppressing the Indians, but they were not unified. They were not able to. Uh, uh, they don't know how to protest, whether violently or peacefully. They don't know how uh, any peaceful way to protest. Mahatma uh, Gandhi showed them a way of fasting, uh, in prayers. Okay, okay. So, let's not uh, let's not yeah. dive much into it. Okay, I just we just sorry. need to explain it on a little bit. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, next uh, one, the next type of leader is is a traditional leader. So a traditional leader is someone who influences stem from the accepted social order. Say, for example, how uh, the best way to put this is in many family owned businesses, leadership is passed from passed through generation. Is it not? Yes. Yes. That is what they meant by social order. So when it passes down through generation, obviously, when you are in when you are in, when you are in your family business now, your either your grandfather or your father would be the director of the company now. And later you would shift to that position and you or your daughter will come into the position that you worked in. Is it not? Yes, that's correct. So this yes. type of order is called traditional leadership. Okay. Now the next one is situational leadership. So what is this? They are effective by being in the right place at the right time. Say, for example, uh, I'm pretty sure you, you guys must have heard about Winston Churchill. Yes. Yes. So one might say he was in the right place at the right time because his leadership style was perfect at that moment. If, uh, one can argue if his leadership style would be perfect in a regular day-to-day -day basis. Because that leadership style fit perfectly for that time during that World War time, not during normal period. I would uh, many people would disagree if Winston Churchill was a, a president or a prime minister or a, or a person of higher authority in this era because he was suited at that time and at that place. He was just in the right place at the right right time and right place. That's what made him a good leader then. This is what they mean by situational leaders, right place, right time. Their, their, their kind of uh, working works well that time, that place. Okay. Now the next one is appointed leaders, which I think it's all it's very straightforward here. Their influence comes directly from their position. Can 
anybody yep okay so the next one is functional leaders their functional leaders is influence comes from doing their job exceptionally well okay say for example can i say a senior financial analyst leading an analyst team based on their uh, analysis experience there is a reason they are leading the team yeah there is a reason the reason they are leading the team is because they have done their job exceptionally well they have been promoted and now they are leading you to achieve the same thing can we can we yeah. say that mm -hmm. yes now let's move mm -hmm. on let's move to the next topic what do you think is the benefits of leadership leadership how do you think a good leadership can impact an organization uh it can increase the uh, employee satisfaction like basically leaders uh, guide their subordinates so it will uh, thereby increase th uh, their employee satisfaction okay good next point please quick quick hurry up guys uh quick uh, problem solving skills uh like uh, not uh, uh like uh leaders were able to swoop into a situation uh, a problem situation and they are able to provide proper solutions for them okay uh, i think increasing employee retention so um when when you have for, for example if i have a good leader um in my in in the company where i work then i would stay there and that leader will encourage me to also um to also be promoted to a higher position okay i think uh, w one benefit of leadership would be to break down complex tasks into simpler achievable tasks like by delegating them to the support needs okay really good okay now we've looked at different types of leaders i think it's time we learn about different leadership styles okay so there are three primary leadership styles okay the first one being autocratic or i can say authoritarian style which simply boils down to these two words do this whenever a manager comes to you and says do this that person follows authoritarian style he just gives you an order that leader takes complete control and makes all decisions okay that is called authoritarian style the next one being democratic or i could say participative style so these people how do they work is they'll come to you and they'll be like hey let's do work let's work together to solve this issue those people are called democratic or participative style technique the leader this this leader encourages open discussion and input from the team okay say for example i am not sure if you guys heard about this pretty sure you guys would have i google follows democratic leadership because in google they listen to each and every one of the people's idea because it's google's belief that that's how you you reach you reach different potential you reach the potential of the company that's how you utilize your employees that's how the employees will be satisfied and this is their leadership style okay and the next one being free reign or delegative style okay so what do they mean by this is the managers will simply be like you go and sort out the problem the leader provides a little guidance and let the group makes decision this is what they mean by delegative style or free reign okay they are give you the they are giving you the reins to make the decision can i give you guys one really good example in the market now have you guys heard about warren buffett yes 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 he is he is famously known for buying companies and just doing the existing management do their work without interfering much he's famously known for this style of leadership and I, I don't know how much you've heard about this but this is how he functions 
that is why that is why he he is able to run an exceptional business Are we, yeah, are uh, we on that? If uh, if if he is able to just check the results and uh, give uh, the authority to the management, it's easy for him also, I think. Rather than going into each process and telling them what to do. Yes, and if you guys. Uh, if you if you scroll down, Evan, you guys will be able to see a diagram, just a mind map. Don't need to worry about it. It's just uh, theories of leadership by different people. This McGregor, Lewin, uh, Blake and Moulton, they have the, they 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 have their own idea of the leadership styles. And Adair and uh, Flutter, they have their own idea on this style. And Benis, we will look about Benis now. So Benes proposed there are only two types of leaders, not uh, all these types that they mentioned about, not the, uh, uh, what is it, not the charismatic, not the traditional. There are only two types, one being transactional leaders and two being transformational leaders. Now let's see what's this transactional leaders. Is. So transactional leaders see the relationship with their followers in terms of trade. They give them rewards in exchange for service. It's like you do this work, you get your salary. That's what transactional leaders mean. Okay. Or get a reward or get an award or something. Now, transformational leaders, they see their role as inspiring and motivating others to work at levels beyond mere complaints. This is someone who inspires and encourages others to do put in more to think more about it to encourage them to reach their maximum potential these type of leaders are called transformational leaders okay so only transformational leadership is said to be able to change team cultures and move them in a new direction if you want your team or your business to run in a new direction only a leader who has a transformative mindset and who has a mindset of inspiring and motivating others can do it not everybody has that uh, pension to do it. Okay. Are you guys understanding that? Yes. Now we've seen what is transformational leader. Now let's look at the look at what skills do they need to be a transformational leader. Before scrolling down, I want everybody to pitch in one or two points regarding that. Tell me what are the skills do you think that uh, transformational leader needs? Uh, I think one would be uh, to lead by example, show an okay. example of how Good. things are to be done. Good communication skills, uh, take okay. feedback from the employees. Okay. Also. Uh, that person should be progressive in nature. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, he should be, uh, um, you know, a, a, um, encouraging their employees to, um, you know, achieve something. Mm. Uh, okay. I think I'm able to delegate. Oh, that's really good. Yes. Understanding what that leader needs. So that can can anybody can anybody say yes to this point? You can only lead others by example, or you can only uh, transform your team when you know what you want, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. You should yes. be able to. You should be able to have a foresight. Like you should anticipate what would happen. That is also a key skill that you need to have to become a transformational leader don't you guys think so yes okay yes okay really good okay you guys can uh, scroll down and see the points down see if you all have given those points
Did you guys look into it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, please scroll down to the next chapter, please. Uh, Vindya, just uh, one thing before we move on. Uh, in this theories of leadership, I can see that there is different uh, like categories. There is personality, style, contingency, or situation. But we just went deep deep into transformational or transaction. Like, I'm are sorry, those the? I, I don't understand you. Come again, please. Uh, in this chart, uh, in the previous page, there is like uh, four categories, right? The first one is personality. The second one is style. The third mm -hmm. one is contingency. The fourth one is transformational or transaction. Like we mm -hmm. just went deep into only this transformational or transaction. I'm just asking if the other points, like the contingency or situation, are also something we should consider when it comes to the pre scene analysis or like give and when giving answers. Is my so question. You think we yeah. didn't go through leadership style? Uh, I think that this one uh, in the flow chart. If you look at the flow so chart, what I'm saying is you don't need yeah. to worry about going through every okay. single author's uh, uh, okay. theory. What you need to know okay. is you just need to know what does leadership style entail in, entail in general, what is personality or contingency uh, entail in general, what is transform and transformational or transaction entail in general. But there is very less chance of them asking you, hey, tell me McGregor's style of leadership. You just need to know what is we, which we clearly went through now. You just need to know these details to uh, to be able to write your exams. Okay. If we if we, see, I can take you through all the leadership styles, all the authors' leadership style. I can take you through everything. But there is a reason why we cut short. Why we've just given you flowchart instead of everything because ultimately it's not needed for this exam. It's given in the books okay. because the book wants you to learn all the resources that is available to you. But we've only given you what is completely 100% needed for you to for you to write in your exam. This model, this flow flow map is just so you will know there is not not just this one we have learned about, but there are other styles as well according to all these different authors. Okay. Okay. Can we move? Yeah, sure. Okay. So now the what is the what is the next topic? Can somebody read out to me loud? Controlling performance part one. Uh, should I read the others also control is a primary task and process of ensuring the operations proceed according to the plan. Okay. Next. Anybody else? Does anybody else have anything to say? Uh, shall I read uh, with India? Or you want to read the theory? Should I read? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm just asking you all in general just to pitch in some points. What do you think about it? That's it. Everybody is silent all of a sudden. Do you guys need like a five minute or 10 minute break? Uh, 10 minutes is impossible. Five minutes maybe. Okay. Are you guys sleepy, tired? What is happening? Why has it become silent all of a sudden? No, I think there was a confusion. Like you want us to read it out or you just want to give us yeah, points exactly. on this particular topic. <laughs> OK, got it, got it. OK, so. Take a water break, you all. Take a water break. We'll uh, continue. Okay. Take two to three minutes. We'll continue again. Okay.
Can we start, everybody? Yes. Uh, yes. Is everybody uh, back? Yes. All right. Uh, Bilal, are you back? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes. OK. What do you think control is? So control is like a steering wheel of a company. It's the process that ensures that the business is moving in the right direction and achieving its goals, all right? Just, just like a driver adjusts the steering wheel constantly to stay on the road, managers and leaders use control mechanisms to keep their organization on track. Do we agree on that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. That's great. So internal control systems exist to enhance the achievements of organizational objectives. What do you think internal control means? Internal control uh, can be like uh, uh, internal control can be a system in which a uh, the management will have various indi key indicators and if that uh, if if there is an evidence in that key indicator standards the manager uh, the management will uh, analyze what is a problem and uh, check with the uh, responsible person uh, why it is happening then uh, they will reconsider the issue i think Okay, so internal internal control is something that every company has to make sure that the company fall that the company is in compliance with the rules and regulations, and they fo follow proper financial reporting, and they follow every uh, every 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 laws properly, and every systems and procedures properly. The this is something that every single company has with them every single company has an internal control team with them to check everything that happens in the company and make sure that everything is being done in order and every uh, every single record and detail is followed through properly all right okay okay in cmas framework of control the control system is seen consisting of a control environment and control procedure now what is a control environment? Anybody? What is um, isn't it? Isn't it the environment where the controls are applicable? Yes. Can you explain a bit more on it? So, for example, um. If we have an office um, and we have controls within the office, so um, all the systems and the policies for each section, say for example, the HR, the finance policy, the HR policy, those are all part of the control environment. So the control environment is like a very base foundation. It's the base upon which all the other control activities are built, okay? So what happens is this control environment reflects the overall attitude and actions of the management and board of directors, okay? This environment is shaped by the uh, values, the integrity and the commitments, everything that is followed by the company. So every control environment will be different for every company because it is based and structured upon every every one of their core values and uh, uh, commitments all right this control environment influences how business strategies and objectives are established 
how risks are identified and addressed, how control activities are designed and implemented. Okay, so this is the okay. basic for all the control activities, controls. Okay. Okay. The next one being control procedures. This includes control mechanisms such as segregation of duties, author, authorization, reconciliation, and so on and so forth. Do you guys understand this? Do you guys understand what does control procedure mean? Mm -hmm. Can we move on to the next one? Do, does anybody have any doubt in that? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. Now let's look at human resources. Okay. So, human resources uh, plays a crucial role in organizational control by implementing and um, overseeing practices that guide employees' behavior and ensure uh, they comply with laws and company policies. Is it not? Yes. So basically, yes. HR's control, HR's control functions. Um, it touches employees' lifestyle, every aspect of employees' lifestyle, from hiring to retirement. Does it not? Yes. What does this HR do? They establish clear policies and procedure. HR helps create a structured environment where expectations are clear to the employees and they understand their roles and their responsibilities. Is it not their job? Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of the key areas in HR's control is appraisal system. What is an appraisal system? Can somebody say? Can somebody explain it to me? Uh, performance appraisal so uh, if an employee uh, if uh, if an employee is working um, effectively and if the uh, manager is happy manager of the TL is happy with their performance uh, his performance can be reviewed uh, on a periodic basis and he can be rewarded mm, okay that's good the next one is health and safety what is health and safety everybody can somebody say that to me? Uh, I think uh, it's the, the work conditions um, must adhere to the health and safety acts that are applicable to that specific company or industry. Hmm. So uh, this health and safety ensures that the workplace is safe and it complies with all the relevant laws that are needed for that said workplace. This, this is like creating a safety net for the employees and protecting them physical harm and the company from any legal liabilities, okay? Yes. Now the next one is discipline no. and, sorry, sorry, did somebody ask something? No, no, no. Okay. The next one is discipline and grievance. What does this mean? These procedures provide a framework for addressing the employee misconduct complaints. So these are like rules of engagement of workplace conflicts, um, ensuring fair and consistent treatment. For example, let me give an example. So a retail chain will have a clear policy outlining the disciplinary steps for the employees who who regularly arrive late, uh, what do they do is they start by issuing verbal warnings. Initially, the manager will call them in and give them verbal warnings about it. And then if they still continue arriving late, what they do is it progresses to written warnings. They, they provide a PDF for a document, official written warning. And then if it still happens, what they do, they terminate them. So basically, what does discipline and grievances? It provides a framework on how to address an employee when, when they are facing a misconduct or when they are facing a complaints. This is like a building structure on how to address them. You cannot straight up go and fire them, can you? No. no. 
No. So I'm not sure how many of you guys have heard this. Recently, uh, a guy from Ireland has won out against uh, the company X for firing him because the company X fired him uh, as he was working from home and not from the office. No, no, not for that. I think he didn't agree to agree, tick yes to terms and conditions. Terms and conditions of the new X after Twitter was uh, acquired by Elon. Since he didn't agree to it, uh, he was fired without any issues and he took that out to the court. The guy is from Ireland and he won the case and the uh, ex had to pay some money. This happened because there were no discipline and grievance. They just straight out fired him without maintaining proper form, without doing proper communication and everything. All right. Okay. So next is dismissal and redundancy. So HR manages the process of ending an employment. It doesn't matter whether it is due to poor performance or due to misconduct or due to organizational change. This is like overseeing a landing and an employee employer relationship must end. So for example, uh, during, uh, during, you know, all the companies are facing uh, or are firing lots of people now, nowadays, last year as well. So during this time, a company's HR department manages a redundancy process ensuring all the legal requirements are met and affected employees receive support in finding the new employment okay that is a redundancy process dismissal and redundancy process they cannot just be like hey you're fired get out you have to follow certain procedures for that as well you have to follow the follow legal requirements you have to see to that the employees receive support post that and everything okay the next one is fairness in the workplace, diversity and equal opportunities. This one, I think we all know because this is something that's been on a trend, on an uprise for the past decade. So can somebody say, uh, tell me what this is? I think uh, the whole issue which is happening, especially in India, in terms of gender, like male and female, like having equal opportunities for everyone in all the all the areas of uh, the business. I think this can be an example. OK, anybody else? Uh, I think also to resolve the uh, uh, pay dis disparity in pay. Mm. Anything you would like to add? Uh, no. Okay. So the next one is management by objectives. So management by objectives is like a strategic approach. That's that is essentially like a, uh, like you entering the destination on your Google Maps or Apple Maps. It provides a clear end goal, but it also allows flexibility on how to reach that end goal. Okay. MBO involves um setting specific measurable objectives at various levels and then giving employees the the freedom to determine how is the best to achieve what is the best way to achieve these objectives okay so this this mbo approach balances control and empowerment as well it makes sure that everybody is working towards a common goal while allowing individuals to use their expertise and creativity in achieving those goals. Are we uh, getting the point? Example, can I say like a, a sales manager setting a quarterly revenue target for, for uh, their team, but they allow each individual to be sales rep representative to develop their own strategies to achieve those target. Can I say that? Do you guys understand now? Mm -hmm. It's like if you are a team leader, you set a target and you let your team members know, hey, this is this is going to be the target for this month or this quarter. I don't know how you are going to do it, but do it. That's that's what they mean by MBO. Are we understanding it? Yes. Again, we are here at health and safety. 
this is health and safety is like a legal is a legal requirement which which every company should adhere to uh, this is like a this is like building a shield that protects the employees and the organization okay so this involves identifying potential hazards implementing the preventative measures for it and also creating a culture of safety okay so the effective health and safety uh, control will not only fulfill the legal obligations but it will also contribute to business success by reducing accidents improving morale and enhancing the company's reputation so when you keep having accidents in a place what happens that place becomes unworkable and people will fear to join that workplace do they not and your reputation also falls along with it telling oh they don't take care of their employees very good i i hear there has been an accident keep on happening at the same workplace and they don't do anything about it does it happen or not yes yes all right so what are the benefits of health and safety control i want everybody to pitch in one one points it's very easy avoid any uh, uh legal future legal costs like a huge cost sometimes okay. if an employee got hurt by some accidents uh, or anything and if it's uh if uh if uh, if the government or the police is able to know or the court and i uh, is able to know that this is because of the uh what do you call inefficiency of the management or without the proper health and safety controls or if we if we didn't give proper instructions to the employees regarding safety uh, those kind of thing it can be mm. a huge legal cost for the company mm. uh talking from the viewpoint of employees uh they'll feel more secure to work in a place where these health and safety controls are in place okay um it enhances the company image so um it will give the signal to the public that it's a uh, that it's a uh, safe and it's a safe workplace to um work for Okay, Bilal. Uh, I think I'm okay. I'm aligning with what everyone else said. I don't have any new points. Okay, I I told one point, but I think nobody has mentioned it. It also leads to cost saving, don't you think? You avoid accidents happening. You avoid employee retention, uh, employees quitting on you, and you avoid the rehiring costs. So cost saving is also ultimately one of the key points and i like i told already company reputation is also key point all right so uh, i think i've been already said that like yes, you had mentioned the point uh, was relating to that cost, cost yeah. savings okay got it got it sorry sorry about that okay so if we scroll down what we can see down here is this 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 framework is essentially this framework essentially outlines the key aspects of workplace health and safety regulations in the uk uh, i think it was in 1974 so here this is an overview of it uh, the policy requirements there are certain policies like organizations with five more than five employees must, must prepare and revise a health and safety policy statement and those statements should cover a policy for health and safety the organization to enforce it arrangements for implementation employee notification and the key areas of focus in health and safety should be safe plant and work systems safe handling of articles safe workplace maintenance entry and exit adequate facilities and uh, health and safety training like emphasizes safety rules and regulations for safe work behavior identify problems training needs through inspection accident reports committee discussions importance of top management support for successful implementations so this framework ultimately aims to create a comprehensive approach to workplace safety while emphasizing policy creation and uh, practical implementation through training maintenance of work safe working condition okay this also highlights 
ongoing nature of safety management, acquiring regular revisions, refresher training, consistent support. So this is nothing for you guys to worry about. This is just given here to as an example for you guys to see how and health and safety regulations are being given in certain countries, how it is met, what is the process for it, what is the procedures, what are what are all this the stuffs that needed to be included in that report. This is just an example for you guys to go through. Okay. Now okay. if we move on, now we are talking about discipline. What do you think discipline in a workplace means? Discipline in workplace means Employees following goals while behave while behaving acceptably acceptably without any conflicts. Okay. So what do you think are the situations that uh, require disciplines? Attendance issues like coming late, leaving early, or being absent for work, doing doing a not proper good, not a proper job rule breaking not following effective safety rules not doing the assigned tasks behaving poorly towards the fellow employees affecting the company's image these are all the situations where disciplinary actions needed to be taken do we all agree on that yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. okay so there are certain procedures for handling the disciplinary process First, like we already talked about this, they do informal talk, they give oral warning, they give written warning, they suspend, demote, terminate. This is the process. This should be the process. You cannot straight up go and terminate them. This is the proper uh, format you should do before finally firing them. All right. Do we agree on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So what do you think is a grievance? Pro grievance. Just in general uh, if employees have any complaints uh they uh, the management should have a, a, a system to uh, get those complaints and take actions on it hmm. what else Okay, so grievance procedure essentially is when an employee feels that they have been treated unfairly. They have been wrongly dismissed. They have been... Uh... Give me some examples for uh, unfairly treating. They are being picked on for how they look. Discrimination. These are all some stuff. These are all some stuff that the employee might feel they are being unfair or others are being unfair on. Are they not? Do they not? Yes. Yes. Uh... Okay. Like we talked early, like how there is a process for disciplinary, uh, for HR, for everyone. Grievance also has procedures. Grievance also has process. The first step to, should be the employee will talk to a colleague or like a union representative. And if what they say is true, they take it to the next immediate supervisor. And the next step is, if the issue is still unresolved, they will then escalate this issue to a higher management where they can get a much better uh, identification and stuff. And at finally, they will inform HR department if nothing still happens. You cannot go straight up to the HR department and inform them. You have to follow all these procedures before anything happens. They discuss it with others. They discuss with the immediate supervisor. If they also cannot help, they discuss with the manager and then HR. And then they should be made, they sh it should be observed and it should be observed whether it is just to them or to everybody else. Do you guys agree on that? Yes. 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 Uh, why are you all silent? I feel like you're, you, you all have just muted down for this chapter. Is it difficult to understand or is like we don't have anything much to pitch in? No, it's it's not difficult. 
All right. I think it's very clear. So I think we don't have any inputs. I think everything is clear. Yeah. Okay. So like for the is, other uh, chapters, like we had to think of examples, but here it's like it's it's written. Uh, whatever is written is clear to us. So maybe that's why. Okay. That's good. That's good. What do you think is tribunals? Uh, legal courts. Uh, it's less than the legal courts, uh, less formal than legal courts, and uh, employees are able to uh, get uh, a, a complaint in that court and get justice from them. I think. Yes. So simply put, those are all independent bodies that resolve the employment disputes. So some of the example cases can be like we discussed about unfair dismissal, contract breaches. These are all some of the very common stuff that can go to tribunals. Okay. Mm -hmm. so benefits of discipline and grievance procedure we all discussed uh, about, and we just want to look at it again. Employees' legal obligations are uh, met. These are yes. With your one doubt, a uh, small doubt. Uh, this tribunals is uh, is the is conducted by the company itself or by the uh, government or any other external bodies. Uh, this won't be. In, in, Sorry, yes, please continue. Uh, is is company appoints the tribunals or the it 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 will be from another independent body? Independent body, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. Anything else? No, that's clear. Can I move on? Yep. Okay, yeah. so we've already talked about discipline and grievance procedure. This is a legal rule. You cannot straight up fire. You cannot straight up uh, do anything. There are certain rules and regulations that you need to follow. So one of the benefits of following discipline and grievance procedure is the employer's legal obligation is met. Again, cost is saved because legal damages can be prevented and uh, there won't be any issues with the employees as well. So if even if they face any uh, issues due to unfair stuff and quit, you don't have to hire somebody because you've already done that, investigated, finished it properly. The reputation is preserved. Again, these are all some of the benefits of following the proper di discipline and grievance procedure. OK? I think it's the same as that of health and safety standards. Yes. I think it's the exactly yes. same point. Yes. Now, what is a dismissal? Um, employees being terminated? Yes. So it can be two ways. It can be either constructive, like it can be because the employee resigns, or it can be wrongful, like we talked about. It can be unfair dismissal. So how do you all differentiate between a fair and an unfair dismissal? That's what we're going to look now. So dismissal is normally fair only if the employee can show that if it's for one of the following reasons. So a reason related to employee's conduct. If the employee behaves, if the employee does not behave properly and they kept and they uh, received warnings in the proper format and they still haven't followed it, and they terminated that employee and they dismissed that employee, it is a fair dismissal because they have given warnings, but the employee failed to follow it through. A reason related to employee's capability or qualifications of the job. The employee just didn't qualify for this level of job, or the employee is not well in doing the roles and responsibilities or associated with his job. Do we agree? Is it fair or unfair dismissal? Guys, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes. Give me a couple points. Give me a couple points. Give me any one or two reasons that you think will be fair dismissal. It's straightforward. It's okay if you read and say as well. It's okay if you read through the screen and say as well. Read and say. The class is very silent. I can't take it. Uh... <laughs> I think uh, by the innovation, like with the technology that each business is adopting, some roles become redundant. 
due to which mm -hmm. it is uh, I think it's an unfair like I, I don't know if it's fair or unfair dismissal that I think that is unfair like it isn't it is nothing yeah. from the you know the employee has not done anything wrong it's purely something has which has come from the employer so it will be unfair for the employee if, if the think? employee is willing if the employer is willing to pay uh, pay proper the didn't pay so usually in uk and all if one post got written in they will get uh, if the post is got written in they and if the person is serving more than uh, two or three years or five years or something they will will get a huge money if we are they're settling in a huge money and uh, with the huge money and all i think it's so what they essentially it, mean by saying redundant is mostly these kind of redundant jobs you know they'll only take it on a contract basis temporary contract basis so when those contracts ends the job ultimately will become redundant because they would only need that for a certain period of time and ultimately they don't find that job useful or your skill useful so they deploy or they terminate that contract i think that's a fair dismissal because if you are not qualified for any other job and the job that you did is redundant now, it's not unfair. And it's not like the employees will not know. While you are in the company, you will know what is happening and you will be notified about everything before. And like Eben said, certain points are applicable as well. Okay. 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 Also, yeah. yeah. Also, if you don't, if the employee doesn't perform his duties as stipulated in, in his contract. Hmm. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay. So, what do you think is an organizational culture? This some point. Anybody? Explain it very uh, simple. I think it's the picture that the um, public gets from the outside of the company, like what the company is about, how the company um, visualize themselves. Yes, it's the set of values, systems, and rules that outline the employee behavior within the organization. It's how the employee, it's how the company or an organization follows everything, how it sets rules, how it outlines, how it influences the behavior. This all falls under organizational culture. Okay. Now it's very important because it has a influence on the behaviors and the actions of the employees. If the organization doesn't have a proper culture, there is not going to be a proper set of rules and regulations and without proper set of rules and regulations, the employees will not have limits or rules to follow and, it's, and it will be like a market without any proper guidance or anything. So organizational culture is a very important uh, thing that a company needs to follow in order it to have a good coexistence among company, employees and everybody else. Uh, leaders and everybody else okay it also represents organization strategy structures and systems and how it responds to change because your culture your organization's culture should not just be adaptable for this one year it should be adaptable it should change according to whatever changes are thrust in the fa company's face the company should be ready to change its culture accordingly Say, for example, we previously discussed traditional business v modern business. Now, the um, traditional businesses cannot keep running with the same organizational culture, even in this era. Can we agree on that? Yes. So that's what they mean by the company and the culture needs to be able to adapt to change. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think okay. are the what do you think a strong culture is amongst the company? In the company, we I've already told all the points. I just need to 
I just need you guys to hold the points that I just said. It's literally the culture. I've already told the points. Just recap it and say one or two points, everybody. What do you think a strong culture is? What do you think a strong culture includes? What do you think it will? Uh... I think a strong culture will include the basic work ethics, which is to be followed mm -hmm. amongst the employees. Mm -hmm. So having okay. a good ethical like policies is also contributing to having a strong organizational culture. OK. Uh, I think um, a good organize, organizational culture uh, uh, promotes uh, diversity. So like um, there may be people from different backgrounds. So, uh, uh, you know, inclusion of people from different diverse, uh, different cultures mm -hmm. and societies. Mm -hmm. I, I would say teamwork as well. Okay. Uh, as Natasha said. Okay. Do you think we we've, we've covered everything there? Let's go through the points. Facilitate good communication and good coordination within the organization. Provide a framework of social identity and a sense of belonging. Reduce differences amongst the members of the organization. Strengthen dominant values and attitudes. Regulate behavior and norm amongst the members of the organization. Minimize some of the perceptual differences among people within the organization. Reflect the philosophy and values of the organization's founder or dominant group. Affect the organization's strategy and ability to respond to change. Are we all clear on it? Uh, yes. Yes. OK. Now I want you guys to all say one point, one difference between equal opportunities and diversity. One point. What is equal opportunity and diversity? Come on, guys. Uh, equal opportunity means uh, uh, providing mm. provide, providing a, a work culture work culture work culture where uh, each individual is able to uh, able to uh, mm. uh, no, uh, able to perform or uh, perform or uh, go uh, or price their skill, something like that. Uh, but uh, diversity means something um, like diversity means uh, including differences. Like uh, an organization will uh, accept the differences among us, the individuals, something like that. Okay. Others? Guys, I think the equal opportunities can include a sense of participation by all the employees. Okay. And diversity is what I'm thinking about. Um, I would say equal opportunities is treating all the employees the same, whereas diversity is to present um different opportunities to mm. different people okay okay do you guys covered every point from that do you guys think you covered key points no, I think. Sorry. What no, have you guys? I think because 
the human resource uh, the role the human okay. resource role manager role and uh, mm -hmm. pro proactive actions and non proactive actions mm -hmm. maximizing potential mm -hmm. you guys understand what they mean by that Um, actually, um, I find it hard to understand the like. What do they mean by those two points? So, under equal opportunities and diversity, let's. I I'll give you the one word that they are missing, so that it's difficult for you guys to understand. Um, it's so that that's why it's difficult for you. So the first point talks about the goal of e equal opportunities. What's the goal of equal opportunities? To remove discrimination. And the diversity's goal is to maximize all employees' potential. What is the focus of equal opportunity? They focus on the disadvantaged groups. And uh, diversity focuses on all employees. Do they not? Mm -hmm. And responsibility. Equal opportunity responsibility is a mainly HR responsibility, while diversity responsibility belongs to all managers because they are focusing on every employees okay and equal opportunities approach is proactive action diversity is diversity they do not need a proactive action do you guys agree the last point can explain sorry uh, about the last point uh what do you mean you by got proactive? The last like, point. Uh, you you understood it. I didn't understand. Okay. What do you think is proactive? First, tell me. Can somebody say what is proactive? Something we do uh, in advance, like uh, yes, exactly. Something we do in our advance instead of waiting for it to happen. So what does proactive actions mean? Init that those are initiated, not in reaction to a situation, but instead out of a desire to make a positive change. Proactive action means these are all initiated for because we desire for a positive situation to make a positive change. That's what they mean by this. When they say proactive action is required, you start doing it instead of waiting for something to occur and then do it. You do it before it happens. You do the action before it happens. That's what they mean by proactive action. Okay. You give equal employee equal opportunities before someone comes to you and say this is not equal. You try and make a positive change by being proactive here. That's what they mean. Uh, is it clear now? Yes. Uh, so I mean, yes. my doubt is uh, regarding uh, so diversity means not proactive action. So uh, why is that? Like, uh, uh, it's, it's it happens if we hire everyone and if it's not diversified, we will hire more something like that. I'm not sure about. Can you think anything? Can anybody think anything? Uh, just, I have the answer. I just need you guys to think. No, so diversity, like we cannot um, uh, predict that our team uh, will be, um, you know, from a diverse culture. So we can give equal opportunity. We can provide equal opportunities, but not diversity. OK, anybody else? Bilal? No, I'm not able to relate this diversity and that it is not relying on proactive action. I didn't understand, basically. Ebin, you understand, you understood what Amrita tries to say, is trying to say? Uh, uh, somewhat. Uh, like, if that first, uh, like, I'm not 
sure but it's like uh if uh, a company is not able to hire a diversified team but uh but they are able to provide equal opportunity is okay. that it? so i'll tell you something so the reason why diversity may not need a proactive action is because diversity aims to create a culture where differences are naturally valued and included rather than forcing it organically it's a continuous process you cannot do it in a one single uh, change of rule it's a continuous process it's an ongoing process it keeps changing as it happens okay got it got it good now so yeah it's, a, it's an organic process rather than uh, any anything we have to do or like we can't force it exactly are we good now uh, i think i have an example um for example take of a finance team and um uh, we are trying to recruit uh, five people as a financial analyst and the only thing um, uh, the um, uh, criteria for selecting is that they are they are all either SEMA or ACCA passed so that is that criteria is actually giving equal opportunities so that is a proactive action but talking about diversity uh, we're not asking them to be an Indian or, a, or from Pakistan or like or you should be a UK citizen so that is like uh, giving equal opportunities and and if a person is an Indian like and uh, for the five different five open roles one person is an Indian one person is from Pakistan one person is from UK so these are, uh, these are happening naturally so what happens what the ultimate point of Amrita is trying to say is it reduces the risk of employees feeling that they were hired to fill a quota rather than they were hired for their skills that is also one of the reason the, uh, the companies avoid not taking proactive approach for diversity if people think that you don't value them for their skill and instead just take it, uh, hire them out as a diversity measure do you think they will be retained they will retain in working in the company if they are not valued yeah. and just uh, in the company for the sake of diversity do you think they will stay there no. no that's the reason all right okay i think we are all clear on this can i move to the next chapter because yes. this is a continuation for of this chapter and i feel like if you are able to complete this chapter today itself it would be easier for you guys as well can we move okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So, what do you think reward systems mean? So, a reward um, system benefits for yes benefits for the work the employees do. Yes. So, a reward system in business is like a well-designed game that will motivate the players, that is employees, to perform at their best. It's a strategic tool that all the organization uses the uses to align the employee behavior with the company's goals. Okay, so there are two types of rewards: intrinsic rewards and extrinsic. So, what do they mean by intrinsic? In short, is coming from the job itself. It comes from the job itself. Whereas extrinsic means it's provided by the organization. Let's dive deep into that. Okay, intrinsic rewards are like personal satisfaction you get from solving a challenging puzzle okay they come from the work itself like feeling of accomplishment personal growth these are all intrinsic rewards whereas extrinsic rewards are like trophies prizes that you might get for winning a game or completing a project or being the best employee of the month and so on and so forth okay or it could be like the benefits provided by the organization such as salary the tangible benefits those are all some of the extrinsic rewards like bonuses uh you might get into a better position those are all extrinsic rewards that are provided by the company okay now uh 
a well designed reward system should have certain stuff it should be fair and consistent it should be attractive enough to retain the talents it should be performance enhancing that is your reward should be in a way that enhances the employees to improve their performance that it is attract attractive enough to employees for them to keep working on it is fair the reward is fair and that the reward complies with the laws and regulations if they go on and gives up give something about salary shares and those stuffs and it should be cost effective as well for example uh can i say say for example if a software developer launches a new app they feel a sense of accomplishment that is an intrinsic reward because they'll be working on it for months there is extensive extrinsic is um you know a sales rep may receive a commission for exceeding their sales target for the month that is an extrinsic reward you guys understand the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic uh, extrinsic yes mm -hmm. yes okay so the next one is incentive schemes so incentive schemes are like different game models but in the workplace each designed to motivate the specific behaviors and outcomes amongst the employees so these are the tools that the organization uses to link rewards directly to the performance encouraging the employees um to excel in the areas that are crucial for the company's successes okay so there are different types of incentive schemes some of them are performance related pay this is like earning bonus points based on how well the entire team performs part of the employee's compensation is tied to overall company's performance do you understand this guys yes yes mm -hmm. the next one is peace work this is this is akin to being paid per completed puzzle this is similar to that the more units an employee produces or sells or more task they complete the more they earn okay the third one is point system what do they mean by point system is this is similar to earning points in a video game or for a, achieving different objectives um, employees will earn uh, points for various achievements which can be redeemed for rewards say for example uh, in the europe region you work an extra hour rather say for example you are in a 35 hour shift per week contract and you work for 38 or 40 hours you can either get an extra pay for that overtime or you can get an extra holiday for each hour you are working this is a rule actually each hour or each day i'm not sure but this is a rule you can either get an paid for that or you can exchange it for holidays isn't that good mhm mm do you want to learn more about uh, this kind of rules and regulations and stuff you should you should see if you can get your hands on european employee laws because they are very strict they favor the employees very much you are protected if you are working in europe as an employee in some company because they are very strict with how the companies treat their employees they protect employees at all costs okay so if somebody can get a hands on something or if you can see that in google as well you will understand what these are all about now the next one is commission this is like earning a percentage of uh, the value of uh, each sale you make it's typically found in sales related roles where a portion of each sale goes to the sales person because they sold it next is bonus schemes these are like achievement bonuses that you can find in the games this is awarded for meeting or exceeding specific targets again like sales target and stuff they can be individual or team based as well okay and next one is profit sharing this is like dividing up uh how can i say a uh, 
a portion of the company's profits will be distributed amongst the employees. This is also one of the methods of incentive schemes. Okay. Guys, are we good on yes. that? Yep. Yes. Okay, moving on. Yes. So, what is target setting? I think the word makes it apparent. What is it? Tell me. In order to achieve an object, uh, the management have to set a target, mm. which is achieve is both uh, bo both achievable and it should be a little bit more than their performance. Like okay, good. So basically, target setting and the device and number management by objectives that we just learned in the previous chapter. Can anybody say what was that? Management by objectives. We just learned. Uh, based. Uh, so, management by objectives means uh, based on the objectives. Uh, like so, so the management will set certain some objectives, and they will. Uh, they have complete uh, 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 autonomy to do the. Uh, they can do in their own way to achieve that objective. Like great. Really good, really good. Okay, so target setting and management by objective is like a roadmap. It's like creating a roadmap for success in business. All right, they provide clear destinations like the target or the objectives and milestones that will guide the employees and organization towards the goals of the business. Okay, so now. You can't just straight out and go and fix a target. Effective target should be in a certain way. They should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be achievable. They should be relevant. They should be time bound. These are all the certain set that you should follow to achieve an effective target. You cannot go and be like, hey, I want you guys to this month our sales has been uh, 100 units. By next month, I want you to do the sales by 1,000 units. Is it achievable? Uh, no. no. Also, you can go to a team member and be like, hey, look at this. This uh, graph shows that we are at this percentage, and I want you to do this this percentage. You, you, your target should be measurable. You cannot be like, it's at this point. I want to take it to take it to this point. You should be specific at what you say, and your target should be relevant as well. It should be uh it should be asked to do in a proper time frame. Say a target of selling 1000 units is achievable but is it achievable in next month no maybe six months time yes possibilities are higher but next month time no it's not that's what they mean by time bound an effective target should consider all these all right okay now what we're going to look at is we we've learned what is management objective mbo now Peter Drucker is someone who developed the MBO, takes this step further by integrating individual goals with the overall corporate plan. Individual goals of the employees with the overall corporate plans. It's like ensuring that every player in sports team not only knows their individual role, but also how they contribute to their overall team strategy. That's what Peter Drucker did here. So he ident he suggested eight areas for objective settings that they should follow all these areas. They should think about profitability. You guys have become slow again. Okay. Silent again. Okay. <laughs> so Raka suggested eight key objectives that she that uh, the uh, company should follow. Those are profitability. Get standing, productivity, financial and physical resources, public responsibility, worker performance, managerial performance. What he means by all of this is what he means by profitability is this, this should be measured by growth and earnings per share. The board must determine, determine whether it intends to lead in a developing technology or just follow other companies where the company stands in overall market 
productivity targets, what resources they have in finance and physical. Objectives that covers the organization and development and the performance measures, reward systems, worker performance policies and objectives that will cover the development of management and worker relationships, public responsibility. There may be objects, objectives relating to social responsibility, business ethics. Uh, maybe one question. So. Uh, in for our case studies, uh, do we have to buy hard uh, these? No, uh, okay. no. This is just a model uh, that that's given to help you help make make it easier for you guys to understand. So to put it simply, what he means by these eight key areas is when setting up. So Drucker suggest basically suggested to focus on these eight areas when a company is setting an objective. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what he means about profitability is, are we making money in this? Innovation, what he means by that is, <clears throat> are we using the latest tools? Market standing, how do we compare to the others? Product in productivity, he's talking about how efficiently are we being in the market? How efficient are, are we? By resources, he's meaning, do we have enough resources with us, both financially and physically? By manager performance, he means how well our leaders are leading. Worker performance is how skilled and motivated is our employees, are our employees. Public responsibility is are we following the laws and being a good citizen? That's what he means by this. Okay, so I'll give okay. you an example for this uh, Drucker's MBO. Let's say you're running a bakery. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the company's objectives is, objective is become the top rated bakery in town within a year. A managerial mm -hmm. objective is introduce five new uh, popular um, cakes or ice creams in this quarter. A baker's objective could be um, I should master new, new pastry techniques in this month. A sales a uh, sales guy objective could be increase the customer feedback by this percentage by the end of second week. So if you note down, each objective from the company goes down to an individual employees, but at the same time, it also aligns to help achieve the overall goal, which is what MBO essentially is. Is it not? Yes. Now, uh, Amrita, now do you understand Rakas concept? Yeah, pretty much. But don't worry about you getting the getting this in the case study. They won't ever ask you to uh, sit down and label everything and do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we all good on that? Oh yes. 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 Okay. Balance scorecard. Do any can anybody give me any insight on that? Uh, this is a uh, balance scorecard means uh, we will uh, divide the uh, uh, business into four things: a financial perspective and and uh, internal business process, learning growth, learning and growth, and customer to, customer perspective. So, so uh, we will uh, uh, we will analyze into into uh, yeah, this uh, company's aspects according to this perspective. So, for okay. example, in the... okay, I'll make it easier for you all to understand it. Okay, so imagine that you're driving a car. Let me start with this. Uh, just an imaginary concept. So to drive safely and efficiently, you need to pay attention to more than just your speed, right? You also need to watch your fuel. You also need to watch regularly watch your um, temperature, oil pressure, and everything, right? Yes. Yes or no, people? Yes. So this is the concept of balance scorecard. This is the concept for business. Balance scorecard works similarly for business. 
so what is balanced scorecard balanced scorecard is like a comprehensive dashboard for your business so instead of focusing on just one aspect say for example people usually focus on financial performance only instead of focusing on only one aspect balanced scorecard gives you a broader view of how your company is doing across four key areas we'll look into the four key areas now financial perspectives money matters to simply put all right this is like your speedometer in the car it shows you how much and how fast you are growing financially some of the uh, objectives or some of the kpis that you could use to measure financial perspectives are revenue growth profit margins rois these are all something that you could use for the measuring measuring of financial perspective uh, like profits and stuffs and the next perspective is customer perspective what this essentially means is happy customers you know how they say happy wife happy life similarly happy customers happy business yeah this is like checking checking your gps to see if you are on the right road because customers are the only people who will let you know are you following the good direction for your company are we achieving what we wanted to achieve ultimately yeah so it measures how satisfied your customers are example some of the metrics that you could use are you could use to measure up customer satisfaction scores customer retention rate market share these are all some of the metrics that you could use to analyze this perspective internal business processes this is like smooth operation this is like your engine's performance all right it looks at how efficiently your business is running example some of the metrics that we could use are quality control delivery time we take um how efficiently we are producing that is production efficiencies these are all some of the metrics that you could say to identify use to identify the internal business processes the next one could be learning and growth how ready are you for the future that's what ultimately this perspective means this is like your fuel gauge it says how how long you could go with the fuel you are having in hand at the moment it measures how well you are preparing for your future of the business some of the example metrics that you could use to measure this perspective is employee satisfaction training hours innovation rates these are all some of the basic metrics that you could use to um, identify so when i say these metrics every metrics have been calculated and converted to percentage or ratios to see how efficiently we are doing all this everything here is numbers not just online reviews everything is mathematical here okay so why are we using four key perspectives four key areas instead of just relying on one why use a balanced scorecard so it gives us a bigger picture view it helps you see how different areas of your business affect each other for example you you improve an employee training in your company this might lead to a better service customer service which could ultimately result in increased financial increased sales financially so here we have targeted three areas look at that uh, training your employees meaning you are doing something in learning and growth perspective for your future and customers are also increasing happy customer like we talked about perspective and increased sales financial the very first perspective money matters right guys yes 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 and one of the reasons why we use the balanced scorecard is future focus by including learning and growth it ensures you are not just thinking about today's performance but are also preparing for tomorrow's challenges as well or can i say this year for tomorrow for the next year's challenges okay uh mm -hmm. this balanced scorecard also helps ensure that all parts of your organization are working toward the one common goal okay mhm mm okay are we good do you understand yeah. balanced scorecard now Yes. 
Vindhya, so, uh, uh, where can I find the whole explanation of this balance scorecard? Can you send me a descriptive note? You want my note? I don't have any scripted note. I'm just going on my limb here. OK. OK. Um, OK, I'll see what I can do and give you something. Or uh, Bilal, if you have your book, can you just, uh, after our session, go to this uh, balance scorecard page and take uh, two or three photos and share it, please? Yeah, I'll do that. OK. okay. Yeah. Moving Thank on, you. what is mentoring? I think this is all uh, interactive topics. Only only two topics remaining. Just come on, be interactive, and then you'll be done. You can go home. Or just close the computer. OK, Man. come on, guys. Okay. Eben, you've been silent for a while. Uh, mentor mentoring means uh, um, actually, if there will be some uh, pe experts in the industry who will provide guidance to the uh, company, something like that. Mm. Uh, it's called as mentoring. All right. Like in, in terms of technique, for example, in, in my company, uh, we mm. will ha we will ask uh, in case of home office questions, like we hire, we hire uh, outside uh, people from outside. So we will ask uh, legal advice from uh, uh, David Morrison's uh, those mm. kind of people, mm. uh, something like that. Yes. Good. Anybody else? Can somebody say what are the qualities a mentor should have in them? Hey, scroll above. Scroll the above. Ability. You're all gonna look at the points. Scroll above. <laughs> ability to guide the person who like the person is mentoring yes next like the mentor should be able to guide based on his knowledge and experience okay come on people a mentor should have um good communication skills as well to advise the person and um also motivational skills to encourage that person there we go. Really good. Next. So a leader, um, when compared to a leader, so a leader will be a person who is assigned um, a particular, like, he will be a superior if he's a leader. But um, a mentor need not be a leader or a superior. OK, next. Uh, a mentor will help the individual to uh, excel uh, in his career by guiding uh, what to, uh, by guiding him and tell him what to do and uh, what are the areas he uh, he should cover something like that. okay okay scroll down a little bit can look at that did you guys say the points you guys almost delivered all the points good job now, tell me what do you think are the benefits of mentoring? Um, it encourages, for example, if I have a mentor and I want to finish my SIMA, then um, it will encourage me to do it quicker. Um, with someone I know is not keeping tracks of me, but is there to motivate me. Hmm. Good. Next. Uh, a the... mentor will be. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell. Sorry, sorry. Proceed, uh, please. Uh, a, me a mentor will be able to if if if, uh, if an individual have a goal, uh, but he that individual might not know how to achieve that goal. The mentor might be able to structure uh, some steps or procedures so that an individual. Uh, will be easy, uh, will find ease to follow that procedures and able to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're all missing on one important point. And uh, let's see if anyone from the rest of the two can say. Come on, Bilal, Murta, 
I think in continuation with what Abin said, uh, if someone is able to provide us with a clear vision or structure on what is to be done, we'll feel more motivated. Hmm. What does more motivated ultimately lead to, Bilal? Or just everybody? Can somebody can enhanced profit? enhanced efficiency in the process which we're doing? Productivity. Yes, this all leads to a faster career progress. Can we all agree on that? Yes. That's mm -hmm. a very yes. first yes. and necessary point of benefits of mentoring. Okay. And if you scroll down below, you can see the points. Okay. By right. excellent value of money, what does it mean exactly? Like if there is a mentor, the company doesn't mm -hmm. need to train the employee, the training course, and or there is there something like this. Exactly. Okay. Are we all good to go to next one? This is the final one, I swear. And then, and then I'll release yes. you. Okay. <laughs> coaching. What is coaching? Uh, training. Okay. Again, it's used to uh, improve the performance. That's common amongst mentoring and coaching. But what is something that sets apart coaching and mentoring? Can somebody pitch in? I think coaching is to show how the things are to be done. Uh, I also think coaching is more hands on, like keeping track um, of the progress and there's a certain time frame that something needs to happen. All right. Uh, All right. I think uh, I think coaching is uh, something related to training an individual to develop some th some particular skill or something uh, to pass on exam something like that. Okay. Um. What Eben, scroll down, please. Okay, you're already scrolled. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, sorry. Okay, so now look at this. Coaching focuses on achieving specific objectives, usually within a defined time period, right? It's usually a one-to-one -one basis and is set to everyday working situation. It involves gently encouraging people to improve their performance, to develop their skills, increase their self-confidence in order to develop career prospects. Most coaching is carried out by a more senior person or a manager. However, the key issue is that whoever carries out coaching must have sufficient expertise, experience, and judgment to help the person being coached. Do you guys understand these points? Yes. yes. It's, now, it's, let's see what are the different approaches to performance appraisals. Can uh, somebody say anything? Okay, I'll say you guys are very silent now. Ranking system. So this is a structured approach where your performance is compared to previously agreed targets. It's measured compared to previous targets, how we are doing now, how we are doing later, how we are doing, how we were doing before. And another method could be 360 approach. The manager will appraise the individual and the individual will also given the opportunity to appraise the manager. Self-rating. The approach is where the individual rates themselves on certain agreed criteria. Like I'm asking you guys to rate yourself on this chapter. That's self-rating. Okay? Or on this subject. Unstructured format. This approach basically tries to capture all the aspects of the employee performance rather than just one agreed target. This this uh, unstructured format, the name says it doesn't have any format. All aspects, not any format. Every aspect, sing, every single aspect. Okay? Okay. Can you understand okay. that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, all right. Give me just a second. So, now I want you guys to tell me Am I a mentor or a coach? 